Shalom Aleichem, dear guys, holy sisters and brothers, amazing souls that are visiting on earth. What can we say? What can I say except you're welcome? You're welcome. You're welcome. And thank you. So, Baruch Hashem, things are, uh, things are beautiful, things are very, very, um, like, uh, I feel inspired, like, it doesn't really matter what we're going through in life, like, as long as we, we find some, uh, some deep message in that, uh, in that situation, so, like, we're learning, we're, we are uh, coming closer to Hashem, we we think about things in a, in a, in a, with a good um, attitude. We're learning from it. So, like uh, whatever will be, will be. Like uh, we're we're okay. It will be okay. It's all really depend in the in the intention of the, of of our heart in the in the real preparation um, of the person to deal with life. To, to any situation. So, um, I had a certain thought today. I wanted to to open uh, to open our our conversation, our broadcast with, um, and you know, people are talking about the redemption, and people are thinking to themselves. Um, that the redemption that will take place will take place in the life of the believers, in the life of the followers that followed the real righteous one, the real pure ones, the one of truth, whatever, like every person is coming with his understandings of what is the right path and based on his understandings, based on, on his um, assumptions, he thinks that the redemption will include him and like this crazy method, this crazy idea is, is only showing to us how blind and self-centered are those believers, are those people that are claiming to be believers, those people that are imagined that, that they fool themselves to think that they are the true believers and those ones that are worthy for for this amazing salvation and complete redemption of the whole wide world and I'll tell you why because like why is that the evident that those people just literally don't understand what uh, in the world is going on over here in in our world so the thing is that if you would think to yourself that the redemption will come only to a certain section of the world, only to a certain um, part of, of the people on earth, or certain communities, or a nation, one nation, or something like that, there is something very wrong with that. Why? Because it will say to us all that the Creator, He prefer one on top of the other, that the Creator, he himself is his love is um, is not um, revealed and open and offered to all, and this is something very wrong to say on on the Creator. This is something very very wrong um, to say on the Creator. Why am I saying that this is something very wrong? Because today, like everyone are suffering like you have millions of people that are suffering that are struggling i need to move a little bit the cameras for them to be a little bit more balanced hopefully hopefully and for uh, for the enjoyment of the of our viewers of our friends on the other side of the screen so um, in reality, think about it now. Let's uh, let's let's take me for an example because I'm I'm the one that holds the mic. 
uh, tonight. I'm Jewish. I can think to myself that the uh, salvation will come to the Jewish nation. I can imagine to myself, let's say that I believe in a certain righteous man, let's say that I am a Breslever Hasid, I'm a student, a follower of this amazing righteous man, Rabbi Nachman of Breslev. I can fool myself and think to myself, hey, you know, the redemption, the salvation, the light that will come will take place in the life of those ones who followed Rabbi Nachman, of the Jewish people, of those ones that are more like observant and like I like I will I will in my imagination I'll create a certain a platform, an atmosphere that will suit me, that will fit for my knee, like and I am one of them. Oh, I will be redeemed for sure. I've been to Uman. I went to pray on the grave of this righteous man. Everything is like... I said Tikkun Aklali, that Rabbi Nachman. Like, I kept his advice. I followed his path. I, I dedicated my life. Like, I will, I, I will fool myself to think that based on those things that I know that I've done, that I'm included in, I'll be redeemed. Why is it so cruel and twisted to think, to think like that? Because, you saw I had a mistake when I said to think like that, when I wanted to say to think like that, instead of saying think with TH, I said sink. And sink, it means to drown. So what brings a person to sink like that, to drown like that? What brings a person to drown like that, that his thoughts are not really uplifting him, just drowning him in the sea of, of, of illusions? The fact that a person is arrogant and selfish and self-centered, because that he's so selfish and self-centered, so he rather not to deal with the real reality, with the truth that is surrounding him. And he chose to create an imaginary world that will be the easiest and most comfortable for him to enjoy from. And he will tell himself this bedtime story. Me, oh, I will be so important. I will go so high. I will be appreciated. Everyone will admire me. I will achieve my greatness. I will become so important. Even Hashem will whatever. Like the creator of the universe will look at me. I like it. That's foolish. Why? Because try for a second to think with your mind and, and not with your desires and not with your laziness and think about the reality that the world is experiencing on a daily basis. Do you know that, for an example, and that's one example out of many, that, for an example, in China, there is a huge market of selling little girls and children and women to be slaves, to be sold for elder men or people around the world to buy them for the high amount of between four to four hundred dollar for a person. We will repeat it. There is a market that sells children for them to be abused and forced as slave, slaves to be married and forced for forbidden relationships for the higher price between $4 to $400. Now, don't you think that they should also be redeemed? Like, don't you get it that everyone should be redeemed? Like, do you think to yourself that while that I will sit in my house, will learn my Torah, will go and pray in the synagogue, 
will focus my mind on the most holiest things that I'm doing. Do you think to yourself that the Creator, He doesn't care about those poor children? Do you think to yourself that the Creator will prefer to help me and to save me and to protect me and to save and, and, and uplift me and take care of me in all the aspects that I... If you will ask me as the Creator, do you want to be redeemed? I will tell you honestly, I'd rather you take care of those young children, innocent people over there that I never seen in my life, that I never came in touch with, I never spoke in their language, never met one of, of them, never met, never came their parents, their friends, their siblings, never came to cry on my shoulders. I never met one of them that was able to escape and to run away from his troubled life. I rather that you will redeem them first. Can you please help them now? I much rather that they will be redeemed now than me. If you have people that are being abused, that are being raped, that are being hurt, that are being killed, that are being hurt in horrible, horrific ways on daily basis, and not only in China, also in different parts of the universe. You have markets of slaves in all corners of the universe. You have women that are being beaten. You have children that are being abused with no connection to their religion, to their nation, to the color of their skin, to how much money they have in all sections of humans. And if you'll ask me, there are also animals that I would choose to redeem before you're going to redeem me. I have good life. I'm married. I have wonderful children. I have my way to feed my family, to support and to work and to achieve my goals and my desires. We're able to sit in our dining room and to eat our dinners, our suppers. We're able to function. We're healthy. We're good. We're driving cars. You have people that don't have hands. You have people that are sick and ill with plagues, with cancer, with, with, with AIDS, with sicknesses that, that, that don't have healing as for now. What with all those people? To be so self-centered and to think to yourself, Oh me, I deserve the redemption. I deserve the salvation. I'm one of those chosen ones that will see the light, that the Creator will expose Himself to them. That's to sit and to be lazy. That's to th sit and to think to yourself that you are more important than others. But we, the real people of truth, we have a heart. We care about souls. We care about spirits. We care about the emotions and the feelings of people, no matter who they are and to which section and religion and nation they belong to. We don't care about those things. We care about the happiness, the joy, the satisfaction, the pleasant life of every individual, no matter who he is. And even if he's an animal, and even if he's a deer, even if he's a, a, a bunny rabbit, even if he's a little mice, we want him to have that ability to enjoy life. So the redemption, the salvation of the whole universe must take place in the life of all those ones that are in need. And therefore we as people that desire good things to take place in life, we must wake up to understand the salvation belongs to the world. When we are asking from the Creator to redeem us, you can pray for yourself. There's no problem about that. That you will pray for yourself, that you're going to work for yourself, that you're going to make money for yourself, that you're going to eat to satisfy and, and fulfill your needs. No problem that the person will take his own um, clothes to 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 wash them and and he will wash and clean his own house like all those amazing things a person has his needs and he needs to take care of himself there's no problem in that the only problem to think is 
that your concerns, that your issues are more important than others, then you become a liar. Then you become a lying person. Then you become evil. Because then you put in your mind that your needs are more important than the needs of another person. A person, let's say for an example, he has a job. He's working in a certain business and he wants to make money. That's a simple thing, a simple need. Every person needs money. Everyone needs to pay his bills. Everyone needs to pay tuition for their children to learn in school. Everyone has their goals. They need to take their families for vacations. Like Everything is perfect. Everyone needs to have their financials set up in a perfect way. Wonderful. Now... It doesn't make it allow for you to go and steal and rob or to lie and cheat someone because you need he, you need money. Because you think that you should possess, that you should take his money because you are in a great need. So when you go with that understanding that your need is important, but not more important that, that your clients or that partner, or that other person that you try to sell, or to buy, or to make business with, means that you are being honest in that time that you make business with that person, you will not gonna fall into that trap to start lying to him, and to cheat him, and to take advantage of his weaknesses, and to try to hide certain things from him, not to notice that you have certain lackings or whatever, you're not going to try to butter no one. You're not going to try to, to flatter no one. You're not going to lie. You're going to be an honest person. You're going to be righteous. You're going to be pure. And then all your business and all your work and all your effort will be in a balanced way. You're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to go to work and you're going to feel complete with yourself. You're going to be okay. You're going to say, hey, at least I know that I'm honest. Maybe you're not going to be crazy rich because you're not stealing money from others. But who said that the blessing, blessing will not come to your house? And even if a certain amount of money, you feel that you're going to lose it. If now you're not going to lie, you're not going to cheat, you're not going to make some tricks, whatever. That money probably is not deserved to you, is not belong to you. You shouldn't even try to take it because it belongs to someone else. That person, he also has his family, his beloved ones that depends on him. And you shouldn't cheat him and you shouldn't lie to him just because of your selfish needs, because of your ego, because of your lusts, because of your fears, because of your lack of faith in the Creator that will supply all your needs. And even if for now you need to go through a certain challenge, you need to go through a certain difficulty, it does not permit for you to think, to imagine to yourself that false assumption, that illusion that you are more important than someone else. You're going to come happy after stealing money from that poor guy and he will go home broken and his wife going to cry and he going to cry and they won't be able to pay for their children's school. That's fair. No, you can never put yourself in front, more important, prior to someone else's life. All people been created in the shape of heaven. B'Tselem Elokim Baratam. The Creator created human beings in His shape. The shape is the soul, the shape is the spirit. And we must respect each other. We must love each other. We must understand that all human beings are are equal in their nature, that we should love them. Now, if there is someone that is evil, if there is someone that he is an enemy of, of humanity, there is someone that he is so awful, that he is destroying and troubling people and abusing people, we must protect ourselves and fight with him and reject him and kick him out of the picture with no doubt, no matter which, in which way, as hard as he will attack, we should fight back and to throw him away and to stop him from harassing and hurting and destroying and humiliating and, and, and abusing souls. But we as individuals, everyone must first of all work on himself, that you will not be guilty on being arrogant, 
on being selfish and self-centered to think to yourself that you're better than someone else. If really people listen, if really you believe that there is a creator and it's a question, you might not believe in that. Maybe you don't have that solid faith that there is a creator. To write a comment on Facebook or on YouTube or on Instagram and to say, yes, I do believe, I do believe. Or to go and to pretend to be a believer, to go and to say, yeah, me, I'm a believer, yeah, I have faith, I'm Breslever, I'm Jewish, I'm Orthodox. Or, 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 or to say something else, no, me, I'm Mormon, I'm Christian, I'm, I'm Catholic, I'm like whatever, no, me, I'm Muslim, I'm... I'm um, like all those ways of thinking, me, I'm observant, me, I'm strict, me, I'm, like you can claim whatever you claim. The test is how you deal with life. In every situation in your life, how do you deal with that situation? Are you a person of faith? Is your faith, is the existence of the Creator being reflected? in your life when you open your mouth in discussions in conversations when you're about to sell when you want to buy when you're under pressure when someone is threatening you like in all those intersections of life there the real faith of a person is being is being tested and you need to be aware to yourself to see if now you have been rebuked Someone rebuked you, your wife, your friend, your children, life rebuked you, you woke up so late, you came, you came so late to the class, you were late, you were busy, you were troubled, something happened to you, like anything like that that happened to you is a test for you, is a challenge for you, that in that moment your faith can take place and be revealed if you'll be humble and you're going to listen all the way and you're going to try to understand and really going to ask yourself is there something that i can do to be improved to improve is there something that i can do to fix the the things that i did in a bent way in a wrong way is there something that i can 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 do to to make that other person happier like when you do that by that you show the faith the, you, you reveal, you unlock your true potential. You let the, let the light shine out of your body and your spirit is taking place in life. And you're not only physical, blocked and narrow-minded as regular people in the world that always scared and always terrified and always angry and always negative you can talk to people in the street you can talk to people that you meet during your life trying to have a normal decent conversation with them like sometimes you're wondering where am i am i an alien am i like a, 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 am, am i coming from from a different planet from a different world like am, am i a, a uh, uh, from a different from from a different generation from a different time zone like what's going on sometimes people can be so corrupt sometimes people can be so evil sometimes people can be so horrible connect to each other with 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 such um with such horrible attitude with such bad spirit in them and it it can leave you overwhelmed like scared what's going on like how can people be so cruel how can people be so so awful so so violent so 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 blocked so lack of sensitivity of soul why people live in such darkness and there is only one thing that a person can do you should be who you are you should let the real light of truth shine from within and to be that person that you are no matter where you are no matter in which situation you are at now people many times think all right if i want to be a believer if i want to follow god so i just need always to be nice and always to be humble and always to be generous and never to argue and never to scream but that's not the right approach 
That's not the right method. That's not the right attitude. There are times that a person needs to be strong and a person need to be strict and a person needs to reveal the power of 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 his true identity and justice and to and to fight and to protect the weak if horrible things are taking place around you you need to be that person to go and to protest you need to be that person to go and to fight you need to be that person to go and to rebel you need to be that one to go and flip some tables and throw some chairs in the air to make your stand and it doesn't mean to go and hurt no one else it means to protect the weak it means to go and defend the truth it means to go and to fight for the name of god it means to go and to fight for the real true blessings that we've been blessed with that is the wisdom of the creator that been given to us and been sent to us from above to through all the real righteous people of all generations only through the real righteous ones that realized what the real divine will is for us to care of the of of the weak to support the poor ones those ones that are hopeless those that are not able to protect themselves those that are not able to fight for themselves and to stand up against their enemies and it's our job if you're wise it's your job to use your wisdom if you are powerful it's your job to use your power if you are wealthy and rich it's your job to use your money if you have connections it's time for you to use your connections and to make things work in this world in a new order in a real new world order that really the world will be fixed and will come back to balance but for that to take place you need to take responsibility on your life you need to be that person i need to take my responsibility i also need to be that person and my wife she also needs to be that person and our children they also need to take that responsibility and the way that i will affect my wife and my children to learn or my students to learn for me is only if i will be a proper role model if I'm lying to myself and I'm hiding in, 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 in behind my fears and I'm not willing to deal with my pressure and I want to avoid all my commitments and I want to choose to be lazy and, and coward, so I will never be able to educate no one else. I'll be, I, I won't have the power and the ability to influence another person to, to get strength in his heart and to become a powerful person in his area, in his hometown, in his society, around his, like close to his surroundings. But if I will be strong and I will build a life experience that based on my success, that I was able to confront my parents in a certain way that I felt that they that they were like all over me and 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 don't let me space to grow when i was able to talk to them and to tell them my opinion or to or to hold them back from hurting me or hurting my family and it doesn't necessarily need to be that they are bad people just that in that situation the thing that took place was not right so if I will run away from dealing with that reality, that they were offensive, that they were hurting us, and I was not protecting my family, and I'm not protecting my family, so my family immediately will learn that they don't have no one to protect them, that in this lifetime, that so-called role model, so-called father, is not functioning so if he's not functioning we don't have from who to learn so they won't learn how to defend themselves and they won't learn how to defend and protect their beloved ones when they will go and have their own houses and their own families to take care of 
But if they will see that I'm trying, if they will see that I'm putting an effort, if they will see that when I'm wrong, I can admit in my mistakes, and that I'm trying and working on that hard to take responsibility on my actions and to become a better person and a stronger type of human being, they will see, all right, I can learn from him. Even when I'm wrong, I should learn how to accept my, uh, my mistakes and to do tshuva and to try to work on my attributes and to listen and they will see in my behavior a model for them to learn from and they will desire to improve and to grow in their own space, in their own place. Before you work on yourself, you don't have a chance to help other people. And people need help. And like we said, you have people that are in need and not all their need depends in your money or in the time that you're going to invest in going and helping and volunteering or doing other things. Sometimes also spiritually you can support people by working on yourself. Because souls depends in you, not only the people that you came in touch with in life are receiving something from you. I have many students in this lifetime and I see that and we know that and many of us can experience that and we talk about it all the time that many times when I'm going through certain challenges and difficulties in life, my students, they feel the same. They're going through the same thing in their spots, in their places. Like I can crash in a certain situation here today and a, and a friend of mine, a student of mine, in a different time zone, in a different place in the universe, he will go through exactly the same and ask yourself why, how does it happen, why did it happen? Because we are involved, we are bonded together spiritually. There is an inner and hidden connection between us that relates us, that makes us to become one unit. We are one unit together. And based on that, when one is going through something, being pulled to a certain side, so his friend that is attached to him is also being pulled to the same place. And if one is going down, so the other is going down with him. And when one is rising, so his friend is rising with him. This is the secret of the Jacob letter. The angels are olim veyordimbo. Malachim olim veyordimbo. Angels are climbing and going down in it. This is the Jacob letter. This is the secret of creation. That when you climb, you push everyone up with you. You're pulling those ones that are under you and you help them to rise. And those ones that above you, you are inspiring them also to climb and you're pushing them from the bottom. No matter where you are as a link in that chain, you are affecting both sides. And when you're rising, you're pulling and pushing everyone up. And when you're falling, you're helping us to fall. <laughs> you help us to crash. When you're crashing big time, you're taking us with you. There's a, a joke on a person that is drilling in the, in, the, in the floor, in the ground, in the bottom of his room in a boat, in a ship. And someone is hearing him drilling and drilling and he knocks on the door and this guy from in his room saying, no, I'm busy, I'm busy, don't get in. And he says, no, what are you doing? Like, what are you drilling? What's going, what's that noise? He said, no, no, it's a, it's a private cell. It's my room. Like, don't get in it. No. They say, man, what are you doing? Like, I want to see you. Like, it's, it's like we're, we're on the boat together. Like, the noises are getting like scary. He gets in, he sees him drilling the ground. The, the, the floor, so he's telling him, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Takes the drill away from him, saying, it's my chamber, it's my room, don't get in here. Like, what do you mean? You can drown us all, you're so crazy, you don't pay attention. A person must understand that spiritually, spiritually, we are connected. When you let yourself fall to despair, you affect the world. You affect lives of people that depends in you. And not only people. Can you see in faces of people sometimes that that person looks like a, like, looks like a deer, that that person, like he reminds you of a certain bird, like there are things like that. You have people that looks like a tree. 
You have people that looks like flower. You have people that are blooming. Like why all those concepts? Like I feel that I'm drowning. Like a person says like, oh, I feel so relief. Like I drank a cup of water. Like I, I, feel, I feel an illumination. But like why all those concepts of the universe, of, of four levels of, of the world, of the foundations of, of the world, earth, and fire and water and and um, and wind um, no that I said water fire earth and uh, what else do we have Maim ruach adama ve'esh and fire fire wind water and earth all four of them why why they are so mixed and involved in every part of our life like I feel so heavy. I feel so this, I feel so that, like why? I feel uplifted, I'm, I feel like I'm flowing, like, I, like why? Because you spiritually built, spiritually. Of course that the, that the physical world is reflecting that, is showing that. But the spirit is the truth. The physical shape of our flesh, our bones, our physical coverings are only blocking the light of truth of our true souls. They are just reflecting. They are filtering the real inner truth, the secret, the purpose of, of our souls. But in, in reality, in the depths of our being, our spirits are connected to the wide world, to all the creation to infinity from within. So when you go through your downs and you're crashing, mountains are crashing in the world. There are earthquakes and houses are being cracked and people are being pushed out of certain places and car accidents take place in life and bottles are falling and breaking in different locations in the world. Things that have a certain spiritual connection, similarity to your condition, are being affected by you. And when you're rising and when you're growing, so people's payrolls are growing, and people are able to buy houses, and people are finding their soulmates, and children are coming out to the world, and people are able to fulfill their dreams and to find their desires, their holy desires served to them on silver plates. When you're strong, you're affecting in a positive and powerful way on the whole world. And animals are enjoying your happiness and they can go joyful to the fields and happy and, and, and uplifted to eat and to drink and to jump and play with their friends. And when you're broken and your spirit is down and you're hurting yourself and you don't understand who you are and what your true potential is and what's your role in life. So all the world becomes gray and people are down and animals are being run by cars and animals are being slaughtered in, in slaughterhouses and people are, are, are killing animals and tests in, on animals, uh, experience in, in animals and with no purpose and with no real use and reason to do those horrible things. It depends on us. Now, how can you affect the world? I'll ask you. I know how I can affect the world. I need to do the best that I can with no end to be the best person and the strongest person I can be. With no end in every situation. When I'm weak, I need to get stronger. When I'm hard, I need to be softer. When I am blocked and I'm so self-centered, I need to be open. When I'm all over the place, I need to focus. When I'm being rebuked, I need to listen. When someone is just humiliating me, I need to stop him and to tell him, hey, like, what are you doing? What do you think to yourself? Like when someone is trying to steal, I need to protect myself. When someone is trying to steal from someone else, I need to warn and help that guy. In every situation, you are being tested in who you really are. And you need to go all the way with the truth to be the best person that you can be. 
based on your true potential. And you know exactly where you fail and you know exactly where you are strong. You know exactly what your qualities are and you know exactly what your weaknesses are. And only you know where you fail. Only you know if you ate an extra bite that you were not supposed to eat in that meal. No one else in that dining table is able to recognize your thoughts and your feelings about that next spoon. No one can can know it in the world ever. No one knows what you're going through in your thoughts when you're praying, when you're learning, when you're doing business. No one knows what happens with you when you wear your pants, when you wear your skirt, when you wear your sneakers, your slippers, when you go with your boots to the street. No one knows your thoughts. Only you know the truth about yourself exactly who you are and how you behave and how you react and how you work if it's straight and if it's honest and if you're being nice and cool and like you're supposed to or that you give up on the truth and you're being lazy and you couldn't care less about others and you're selfish and self-centered only you know the truth about yourself you and your creator and no one else in the world knows the truth about you except of yourself and you better be honest with yourself and do as much as you can to fix and when you will and when you are you are bringing redemption to the world you are so powerful and your potential is so great that you are saving lives when you do good when you are doing good things, you are saving lives of people with no end. With no end. You are doing a tremendous work when you work hard, when you invest, when you sacrifice, when you put the effort to be honest, to be truthful, to do amazing things. When you do that, you uplift the whole world with you, not only yourself and especially yourself. You're going to see immediate results in your life, but you will also have the merit to see the benefit and the success and the pleasure and the joy and the, and the spiritual development in the lives of other people, of animals, of trees, of the ocean. When you're crying and when you are sad, you need to ask yourself, why am I sad? Sometimes it's allowed to be said. Sometimes you need to go with that feeling and to be honest about it. And sometimes it's only your self-mercy that you have mercy on yourself with no end in a bad way, in a lazy way, that you're being pathetic and not criticizing you, that you are just allowing yourself to fall to that dark bitterness and when you're doing that, you're pulling people with you to that darkness. You drown people in dark places. You let souls that are weaker than you, that are lower than you, to fall. And you don't lift them. And you're not saving them. And they're in need. And you need to care. And you need to take responsibility. And not to blame yourself. Because in every situation when you blame yourself and you hate yourself for your failures, you are drowning them back to a lower place. There is no place that you allow to fall. In every situation in life you must go stronger and you must be honest and you must compare, imagine to yourself that there is some person in the world that depends on you. Even if you cannot see that, even if you cannot recognize that, you should believe in that. You should believe that your soul is precious and powerful and great and people depends in you. An animal depends in you. And you need to ask yourself, who am I and what my purpose is? And go all the way to work hard and to achieve the things that you desire. Now I'm asking you, is that a lecture for Jewish people? Is that a lecture for the Jews? No, that's not. This is a lecture for pandas. This is a lecture for zebras. This is a lecture for giraffes. 
This is a, a lecture for, for leopards, for lions. This is a, a, a lecture for monkeys, for apes, for gorillas. This is an, a lecture for the sharks, for the dolphins, for the sea lions, for the sea turtles. This is a conversation for people. This is a conversation for human beings. And we need to be part of humanity. We need to love everyone. And we need to protect ourselves from any kind of danger. And we need to support each other. And we need to help each other. And we need to care about each other. And we need to do the best that we can for every individual. And no one can teach you and no one can tell you what you should do with your life. Only you know what you need to do with your life. Only you need to follow your heart and to recognize your inner mission and to go with that and to redeem the world, your world, your surroundings, the ones that depends on you. It's written and it's the most, most important thing in the world. Derech Eretz Kadma la Torah, the way of the land, manners, good behavior, good attributes, to work on the way that you talk, on the way that you think about others, not to be selfish, not to be arrogant, to love and to care is more important than all the rest of Torah and Mitzvot. It's more important than Shabbat. It's more important than tefillin. It's more important than kosher food. It's more important than the Western Wall. It's more important than the city of Jerusalem. It's more important than reading in the Torah Monday, Thursday, Shabbos. It's more important than the holidays. To be nice, to be kind, to understand what the Creator wants from you, like I told you before. If you think that to be Jewish, that's the solution, that's the salvation, you are all wrong. Because those little Chinese girls that are being sell now and going to live miserable life until they're going to lose their memory from sorrow and tears and pain, that they're going to lose their life and their reason to live, they are more important than you. Even if you, I don't know who, and I couldn't care less who you are, if you think that in a way you are more important than them. If you think that the Creator cares about you more than He cares about a little girl from a different nation, a little boy from a different state that not belongs to your community, you're evil. You're not good. You're selfish. You are disconnected from the Creator. And the Creator couldn't look at you, cannot stare, cannot see you. The Creator cannot stand you because you're so stink and selfish that it's disgusting. That it's disgusting. If you think that you are better than someone else, yuck, you're so disgusting. You're so filthy. If you think that you're better than someone else, you're so filthy. Go throw yourself to the Nile. Go throw yourself to the ocean. Purify yourself. Do tshuva. Cry to Hashem. Tell Him, how can it be that I'm so stupid? Father in heaven, how can it be that I'm such a jerk? That I think that I'm better than someone else. I'm so stupid. And I think that you will choose me for someone else. I'm so stupid to think that you're going to care about someone else less than you're going to care about me. Like, am I so stupid? So arrogant? So self-centered? So empty in my head? My heart is so impure that I don't understand that the Creator, He loves everyone. That He cares about all creations. Isn't that the worst level of filth? That you think that you're better than someone else because of the color of your skin? Because of your ac accent? 
because that some parent brought you to the world, are you able to think that you will be rewarded for being Jewish? You know what's the reason that you're Jewish? That your parents were together and they brought you to the world. Who are you to take some reward for that? So stupid, so stupid, so twisted. So twisted, so bent, so evil, so dark. The Creator's love is an unconditional love, unconditional love to all of His creations, to all those ones that will talk words of truth, to all the honest ones, to all those ones that want truth that wants love, that wants good, to those ones that wants to live. If you have a person that he just likes to eat, if you have people that are so good and so amazing, beautiful souls, beautiful people, amazing, fantastic human beings, not human beings, animals, let the animals live. They're so important. You should care not only about the dolphins and those amazing, beautiful animals that are rare. No! You should care about every ant. You should care about every goat. You should care about every, every, every animal, every street cat that is walking barefoot on the ground. You need to care. You need to put vessels with water. You need to feed the world. You need to use the power that you've been blessed with and to go and redeem the world. Which world? The world that is surrounding you. If you live in Kentucky, you need to make changes in Kentucky. If you live in Auckland, you need to make changes in Auckland. If you live in San Francisco, in Miami Beach, in Hollywood, Hollywood, California, Hollywood, Florida, you need to make changes in your area. And if you have Facebook and, and social media outlets, use them. You need to use the power that you've been blessed with, the gifts that you received from heaven, and go and break the walls of separation. Make the world a real better place. And I need your help. I cannot do it alone. I need your help. I'm working like crazy. If you would know what we're going through, you would lose your mind. We are in a war, we are in a fight from the moment we open our eyes in the morning till the moment that we go to sleep, too close to the next morning. We barely sleep. We go to sleep every night between 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. That's when we go to sleep. That's when I finish answering all the messages. That's when I finish answering all the WhatsApps. That's when I'm finishing writing all the things I write and recording and working. That's when I finish all those things that I need that I took upon myself. You think someone obligated me? I'm not working for no one. I'm only doing out of love. My wife is not working for no one. She's doing everything out of her love out of her innocent faith, out of her simplicity and her desire to do good. And we are working like crazy. We're pushing this wagon with our bare hands, talking to thousands of people, sending messages and emails. You can't imagine the amount of work that there is. And I need you to help us more. I need you to share those videos with no end. To share the short clips and the memes and all the advertisements that we're creating and the messages. They are life savings. You need to order books and CDs and to hand them for free for people. It's not expensive. Buy a pack of CDs, I'll show you.
Those are life savings blessings. Those are saving lives. Those are saving lives. A person receives one CD like that. You go with a pack in your pocket and you just hand them out in Walmart, in Michael's, in Target, in grocery stores, around the lake, in your job, when you go on the bus, when you go on the train, you just hand them out to another person. How much it cost you? Five dollars. How much it cost you? Ten dollars. And what you do with those ten dollars? You hand them out and you save lives. And you give advice for people to be redeemed, to have a salvation, to receive answers to their inner questions, to find power inside themselves to deal with their struggles and their sorrow and pain. And that's where I need you to get into the picture, for us all to hold hands together as one, as one person with one heart, to go all the way and to win it, to win that game and to bring the Creator out of His hidden place and to save the lives of people, to save lives of people in every place, no matter who you are, if you're Jewish, if you're Christian, if you're Muslim, if you have a different religion, if you follow a different method or idea, if you're a person of truth, the Creator's light will shine through you. If you're a liar, you are blocking the light from the rest of the world, no matter who you are. Thank you so much, Mesh, and bless us all as one. Be happy! Be happy! You hear me? You should be happy. You are the most rich people in the world. You're the most wealthy people in the world the most successful people, the greatest people, the most beautiful and wonderful souls in the world go and shine with no end. Thank you, thank you, thank you.